Hi there and welcome to Hegarty Maths. It's Mr. Arnold here and this is the second video on integration and we're going to look at the constant of integration. Now this video is geared towards our A-level maths modules but is applicable to lots of other maths modules also. Okay, now before we start looking at the constant of integration, I just want to do a couple more examples uh, of some slightly more difficult integrals, such as this one. So, suppose I want to integrate 1 plus 6x squared all over 3x squared with respect to x. We want to integrate this. Before I integrate it, I want to write everything in powers of x. So, I'm going to separate this fraction. So, it's going to be equal to the integral of 1 over... 3x squared plus 6x squared over 3x squared and that's all with respect to x. Now I'm going to tidy up these fractions so that's going to be the integral of well 1 over 3 and I can bring this x up above the line and write it as x to the power of negative 2 and 6 divided by 3 is 2, and x squared divided by x squared is 1. So 2 times 1 is 2. And that's all with respect to x. So let's integrate now. So i, the integral, will be equal to, I'm going to increase the power by 1, so it's just going to give me negative 1, and I'm going to multiply by 1 over negative 1, which is negative 1. So we get negative 1 over 3x to the negative 1 plus, and increasing this, we get 2x. Don't forget our constant of integration c. Don't forget you can always check your answer by differentiating. So if I do a check, negative 1 multiplied by negative 1 over 3 is going to give me 1 over 3. Decrease that power by 1 x to the negative 2 plus 2. So we're differentiating this function and the derivative of a constant is 0. So we get 1 over 3 x to the negative 2 plus 2, which is exactly what we had to begin with. Okay, another example. So we've got dy by dx is uh, 9x minus 2 all over 3 to the uh, square root of x. So just like before, we're going to rewrite things a little bit. So dy by dx is going to equal, and I'm going to write this, uh, split this fraction up. So write it as 9x over 3 root x minus 2 over 3 root x. Now let's um, divide uh, the numerator and denominator. So we can divide top and bottom by 3. And we get 3 and divide top and bottom by the square root of x and x divided by root x is root x minus I'm going to write this as 2 over 3 2 over 3 and x um, sorry the square root of x is the same as let's just write it over here the square root of x is actually the same as x to the power of a half so I can bring this up above the line and write it as x to the power of negative one half. I'm also going to write this root x as a power of x. So 3x to the power of a half minus 2 over 3x to the negative one half. Okay, so i will be the integral of all of this. Three x to the half minus 2 over 3 x to the negative 1 half and we're integrating all of that with respect to x. So that equals, okay, we want to increase our power by 1 which is going to give me x to the power of um, 3 over 2 and I'm going to divide, uh, multiply by 3 over 2 or divide, by, sorry, multiply by 1 over 3 over 2 which is the same as multiplying by 2 over 3. So we get 3 times 2 over 3 x to the 3 over 2 minus 
increasing this by 1 and we get x to the power of a half and multiply by 1 over a half which is the same as multiplying by 2. So we get 2 over 3 times 2 x to the half. Let's just tie up our fractions here. 3 times 2 over 3 is simply 2 and uh, negative 2 over 3 times 2 is going to be 4 over 3 x to the power of a half. Don't forget our constant of integration C. Let's check because that was a fairly tricky one. Um, so I'm going to multiply by 3 over 2. 2 times 3 over 2 is 6 over 2, which is 3. I'm going to decrease the power by 1. And we get this. I'm going to multiply by a half. So uh, 4 over 3 times a half is 4 over 6, which is 2 over 3. And decreasing that power by 1, we get a half. And the derivative of a constant is indeed 0. And you can see that this 3x to the half minus 2 over 3x to the negative a half is exactly what we had here. So that looks good. Okay, so what about finding the constant of integration? There's not a whole lot more to do here. Still going to integrate like we did before. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use these boundary conditions. So this information here is going to help us find the constant of integration. So if dy by dx equals 3 minus 6x, I'm going to integrate to get y. So y will equal the integral of 3 minus 6x. And we integrate with respect to x, which is going to equal. So integrating 3, we're going to increase the power by 1, which is going to give me 3x. In increasing the power by 1 here, we get x squared. And don't forget to multiply by 1 over that new power. So multiplying by 1 over 2, 6 times a half is 3. And don't forget our constant of integration c. So y equals 3x minus 3x squared plus c. Now it tells me when y equals 1, x equals 2. So I'm going to put this information in now. Let's change colors to blue. When y equals 1, x equals 2. So if y is 1, x will be equal to 2. So substituting these values in. And that will leave me with one variable or one missing, one unknown, which is c. So let's try and solve for that c. 3 times 2 is 6. Uh, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 3 is 12, watch out for your order of operations there, plus c. Um, so 1, 6 take away 12 is negative 6, plus that c. And now that means we're going to add 6 to both sides, so c must equal 7. c equals 7, now that we know that, c equals 7, we can go back to our original function y will equal 3x minus 3x squared plus 7. And again, we can do a quick check, like before, by differentiating dy by dx will equal 3 minus 6x, and derivative of a constant is 0. 3 minus 6x, and you see what we started with to begin, 3 minus 6x. Brilliant. Okay, another example here. I need to find a constant of integration when we're given dy by dx and we're given some boundary conditions. Now, I want to rewrite this so that it's a little bit easier to integrate. So dy by dx is going to equal, well, the 8x is still okay. We thought that would be easy to integrate. Uh, 2 over x squared, I'm going to rewrite as 2 by x to the negative 2. So using our laws of indices. Okay, that means that y will equal the integral of 8x minus 2x to the negative 2, and we're integrating with respect to x. 
So let's integrate. I'm going to increase this power by 1, which makes it x squared. I'm going to multiply by 1 over this power. So 8 times 1 over 2, 8 times a half gives us 4. Increasing the power by 1, which is going to give me negative 1. And multiplying this 2 by 1 over negative 1 is going to give me positive 2. And not forgetting our constant c. So y equals 4x squared plus 2x to the negative 1 plus c. Now let's use the fact that when y equals negative 1, x equals a half. So let's put that information in and solve for c. So negative 1 will equal 4 times 1 half squared plus 2 times 1 half to the negative 1 plus c. Negative 1 equals, well, a half squared is a quarter, and 4 times a quarter is 1. Plus, um, a half to the power of negative 1 is the same as 2, so we can just flip it. 2 times 2 is 4, and we have that constant c, which means that c equals um, 1 and 4 is 5. Taking 5 off both sides, we get negative 6. So, that means that y, in fact, is equal to 4x squared plus 2x to the negative 1 minus 6, because c is negative 6. And let's do a check. Check by differentiating. So differentiate this function. Um, four times uh, four times two is eight. Reduce that power by one. Negative one times two is negative two. Reducing that power by one. X to the negative two. Derivative of a constant is zero. So you get eight x minus two x to the negative two, which is indeed what we started with. So we should have done it correctly. Okay, one more example now, which is a little bit like an exam style question. So, the curve y equals f of x passes through this point here, and given that f dash x equals 2x cubed minus x minus 8, part a, find an expression for f of x. So, let's just write this down. f dash x equals 2x cubed minus x minus 8. So, this is the gradient function, like dy by dx. So we need to integrate to get f of x. f of x will equal the integral of all of this. So the integral of 2x cubed minus x minus 8. And we're integrating with respect to x, so we have that dx at the end. And that's going to equal. So increase the power by 1. We get a 4. Multiply by 1 over 4. 2 times 1 over 4 is a half. Increasing the power by 1, we get a 2. Multiply by 1 over 2, 1 times 1 over 2 is 1 over 2. And increasing the power by 1, we get 8x. Not forgetting our constant c. So f dash, f, or sorry, f of x equals all of this. Now, we have some information here. When x is negative 1, f of x is 4. So when x is negative 1, f of x is 4. So f of negative 1 will equal 1 over 2 times negative 1 to the power of 4 minus a half times negative 1 squared minus 8 times negative 1 plus c. And when we put that in, we should get an answer of 4. It must be equal to 4. So we can use this information now to work out what c is. Okay. Negative 1 to the power of 4 is going to be positive 1. Positive 1 times a half is a half. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 times negative a half is negative a half. Uh, negative 8 times negative 1, positive 8, 
we need to add on that C and that will be equal to 4. Well these guys are going to cancel out and just solving for C that means that C must be equal to 4 subtract 8 which is negative 4. Okay so let's rewrite our function f of x now. f of x is in fact equal to 1 half x to the 4 minus 1 half x squared minus 8x subtract 4. So that's the actual function f of x. Okay, what was the second part? Find an equation of the tangent to the curve at the point on the curve with x coordinate 2. Well, we have the gradient function. This is our gradient function here. 2x cubed minus ax minus 8. Let's rewrite that. So f dash x, and this is part b, f dash x equals 2x cubed minus x minus x minus 8. Okay, and we want the equation of the tangent to the curve with x coordinate 2. But we need to know what the gradient is when x is 2. So I want f dash of 2. That will equal 2 times 2 cubed minus 2 minus 8. Uh, 2 cubed is uh, 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 16 take away 2 is uh, 14. 14 take away 8 is 6. Just double check that again. 8 times 2 is 16. 8 take away 6. Yeah. So uh, when the x coordinate is 2, the gradient is 6. I also need to know what's the point. I need a point, remember, uh, to write the equation of a tangent. I'm going to use y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. I need to use that to write the equation of the tangent. Well, I've got the gradient, which is 6. I need y1 and x1. So what I'm going to do is evaluate what f of x is when x is 2. So to get our y value. So we do a half times 2 to the power of 4 minus a half times 2 squared minus 8 times 2 minus 4. So we're plugging the x coordinate back into the original function. 2 to the power of 4, 2, 4, 8, 16, 16 um, times a half is 8, uh, 4 times a half is 2, um, we're going to take away 16 and then take away 4, a little bit more space, so 8 subtract 2, negative 6, sorry not negative 6, positive 6, take away that 16 is negative 10, Negative 10 take away 4 is negative 14. So the point that we're going to use for this, for our green um, formula here, is when x is 2, y will be negative 14. So finally, we're going to use the formula. So y minus y1, well y1 is negative 14, so adding 14 equals m, well the gradient is 6 at that point times x minus x1. Um, we're going to write this in the form y equals mx plus c. So y plus 14 equals 6x minus 12. So y will equal 6x, uh, taking 14 off both sides, negative 26. So that's the equation of the tangent to the curve when x equals 2. And that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it useful. I'll be back again with another video soon. All the best and take it easy.